I'm going to show you how to set up and use a combination of universal plane. This is the last in our group of joinery planes. And here's a, an intact example of that. And these planes were designed to, uh, for the joinery purposes, designed to do rabbits, dados, plows, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and that's what we're concerned about. So I've got uh, one plane here that's intact, just so you can see what, what, it, was, what it was supposed to look like. And I've taken another plane and broken it apart here. So we're gonna reassemble this plane with a cutter in it and plow a groove and also plow a rabbit. And I'll show you how we can set the fence to do those two different operations, uh, quite versatile. And this will give you a good idea of how, how the various parts of the plane go together and how they work. First, we have a cutter right here. And you remember it's got a little notch at the top right here. That's what engages in the in the uh, body of the plane. So there's a slot right here. The cutter can fit right in that slot, like so. And then you set the pin to engage on this part right here. So, and you can lock the cutter in with this thumb screw right here. So the thumb screw sort of pulls the iron in and locks it. And this, um, screw adjust here allows you, when you loosen this up just a little bit, to move the iron up and down to adjust exposure here. So a couple of things to look at on this part of the body. This is the, um, the main part of the, the body. We've got two arms here. These are long arms. Uh, the plane also came with short arms. And you can loosen those long arms with these two screws here and move those arms this way or that way, depending on which side you're going to have the fence on, uh, and, uh, and, and depending on the width of the cuts you want to make. You can see that there's a depth stop right here, which we can loosen right there with that set screw, and we can adjust the uh, depth stop up or down there. And then the main body has one of the two skates uh, that this plane has. Now, when you're using narrow cutters, you only really need to use one skate. Just that provides sufficient support. But this particular cutter here, if you can see how, how wide that is, it's wide enough. It needs a second skate here to provide support on, on this side of the cutter here, the left side of the cutter. So this particular skate, if you look here, you can see that there's the, the skate, which is provides a support for the back side of the iron. And that skate has got uh, a set of, a set of uh, has a little spur attachment here that uh, provides cutters on this side. And then the other skate has uh, spurs on the other side as well. So you could actually set this plane up to cut cross grain. You could do dados. Um, you can do a dado up to about eight inches from the edge of a board with the longest fence bar set farthest away. So about eight inches is the, the exit. You could get longer bars. Stanley mentions they made longer bars, way longer, um, but they didn't come as standard with the equipment. So we've got a skate, spurs, depth stop, the uh, uh, cutter locking thumb screw here, and an additional uh, depth stop back here, which you're not really going to use. Um, these planes had a, 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 another cutter called a slitter, which was used to slit veneer or thin wood for making Venetian blinds and all that. And that was actually typically locked onto the plane right here and kept there, as opposed to the other cutters, which were kept in a separate box. Uh, so the slitter was kept on the plane itself. Anyway, so we've got that. Um, and the cutter is adjusted here. And you can see that the cutter is just even with the edge of the skate. 
And um, so we'll go ahead and put on the other sliding section. And that has two holes in it that allow you to slide onto the fence and a couple thumb screws to lock that sliding fence. And what happens here is we bring this fence up just even with the other side. We'll have to loosen this up just a little bit to get it to slide over the cutter. Let's get that in there. There we go. So this sliding fence here needs to be lined up. Put that back in and get that all squared away here. There we go. Needs to be lined up with this edge of the cutter right here even along this edge right here. So we need to adjust that carefully, looking down the length of the, um, uh, uh, of the skate here, checking to make sure that how far this cutter is, is, uh, that is uh, flush with the outside edge. And you can see the extra pair of spurs over here if we were going to use a cross grain. So let me just take a second here and get this adjusted just right. I'm going to snug the iron back up into its spot. And then I'm going to move this manually over until it's right on the money. And it's important that the cutter be even with the outside edge of the skate. If it's not, the skate will interfere with the cutting action of the, of the um, cutter there. So I've got it just a little bit proud, just a one hair, just like it is on the other side. So we've got the cutter and two skates here and now we can put on the fence. The fence is the other sliding section that rests again on these two uh, uh, rods right here and the fence has two positions. Um, it has a pair of holes that are low and a pair of holes that are high so that you can use the fence either as a, a, a width fence or if you have it on the high holes it'll actually slide underneath the cutter and convert that cutter from a plow plane cutter to a rabbit cutter. But right now we're going to use it as a, a plow plane so we're going to put it in the lower pair of holes like so. Let me get this lined up and you can see that the way we've got it arranged the fence comes right up here and we just adjust the width of the fence away from the cutter depending on how wide how far in we want our, our, our groove, our plow plane groove, to be in from the edge of the board. And I'm just going to set this for some arbitrary distance. We're just going to cut a, a little bit of a, a plow groove here, and then we're going to reset it for a rabbit cut. Let me just get that squared away here. Snug those up. Make sure that's snugged up. Make sure our iron is proud of the... Uh, Proud of the skates here. If I if it's not, I'll readjust the um, cutter here, and we'll take a pass and see if we get a shaving. We may need to readjust the position of the cutter up and down. So again, this knob is a is a, an a, a attractive nuisance in a sense. We really want to be pushing this fence against the side of the work, so like so. So it's a little bit snug. I think probably the iron is a little bit not quite proud enough on one side of the skate right now, but we, we have got a groove here. Uh, let's just reset this for a, a, a rabbit cut, and I'll show you what difference the fence makes. You can see the fence right now comes right up to the edge of the skate, so the distance here is how far the groove is set in from the edge of the work. Now we're going to make this um, fence useful as a rabbit cut. So we're putting 
the fence on the upper set of holes here. That drops the fence down. And now you can see the fence slides underneath the cutter and exposes just a portion of the cutter, depending on how much of a, a rabbit we want. So let's just cut this in half, just as, just as an example. And we'll make a small rabbit that's half the width of this iron. I'll go ahead and snug that fence down again. And we'll go ahead and take a pass and see what happens. And there we go, the same cutter as a plow grooved and as a rabbit. Just a readjustment of the fence. This is Joshua Farnsworth. If you're interested in woodworking with a mix of hand tools and power tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find a bunch of free woodworking lessons, workshop tours with amazing woodworkers and our very popular tool buying guides. You can ask questions and share your projects with thousands of woodworkers on my forums. Enjoy!